everybody. Once again, it is another podcast with your truly Henry Fernandez. Okay, so I was at this particular store, and while shopping, I heard over the PA system, clean up on aisle 11. Now, when I heard that, of course, you know, I'm a kind of a, a visionary, you know, I, I turn everything into a message, if you will. And the moment I heard that, a couple of things started going through my mind. First, number one, the number 11, 11. Immediately, I don't know why, but for some reason, the thought came into my mind, chapter 11. Now, when someone files for chapter 11, they're suggesting that they're bankrupt, that their finances are out of order, their, um, their, their situation is so bad that they need to um, put a freeze on their creditors so that they can find a way to, um, if you will, come up with a plan of action to uh, reconstruct their finances, to pull themselves out of debt. Now, I want you to listen to me carefully because this may not be for everybody, but I believe this is for you. I believe that this podcast is going to help you to begin to rethink because maybe you've had issues with your your life, you know, certain areas of your life. Maybe you are bankrupt mentally. Uh, mentally, you're drained. You you mentally you are just exhausted because of the situations in your life, the events that took place in your life. So right now you are bankrupt. You have mentally checked out. I mean, you're functioning, yes, and I'm not saying you are crazy or whatever, but you're just exhausted. You're you are overwhelmed with the issues of life. Some of you are bankrupt in your relationship. Perhaps maybe you don't have someone who's asking you out for a date or the ones who are asking you out for a date, you're kind of rebuking all kinds of demons and and spirits, you know, and so forth. Uh, Maybe you're in a relationship and it's just not working. Uh, Perhaps your marriage is in chapter 11 or it has five for chapter 11. It's just bankrupt you know, and that's it. Um, Perhaps it's your business. Maybe it's the relationship with family and friends. Um, It's maybe a legal case. You're just bankrupt, you know, and of course it can be finances. And and so your life is messy right now. So when I was in that store and the announcement was clean up on aisle 11, immediately I thought about it that aisle 11 is messy. Aisle 11 is an environment of bankruptcy. Follow me here. It's an environment of bankruptcy. So it's messy and it's calling for one of the workers to go and address the situation and clean up the situation because potentially it is not, um, uh, you know, a, a good image. Uh, for the store to have an aisle messy, plus it becomes a risk factor because other customers can pass through that aisle and and, and be hurt. So you want to minimize your liability, you know, and so forth. And I wanted to spin that today to say that your life, you know, you know, bankruptcy, it, you know, your address may not be number 11, But you're at a place right now where it's messy. It's messy. You know I'm talking to you. I mean, a lot of people don't know. A lot of people can't discern it. And and quite honestly, you know, you've got some people walking around and all they do all day is discern, discern, you know, and somehow just to tickle their their, uh, passions and so forth. But the reality is you are bankrupt in whatever area. Anything that causes a mess in your life, that's bankruptcy. And you're thinking to yourself, how can you get up out of this? Well, this podcast today is that PA 
system announcement. It's that public announcement to you saying, hey, God sent Henry today on this podcast to say, okay, clean up in your situation. God wants to clean up your situation. Please don't miss this moment. God wants to clean up your situation. If you allow him to, he'll clean it up. (laughs) Yes, he'll clean up your life if you allow him to do it. So you need to take heed to this announcement. You need to take heed to your life and admit it, whatever area of your life that may be, it's in bankruptcy. It's lacking something. So you need a cleanup and a cleanup you will get. If there's anybody who can straighten your life out and bring things into order, it is God. And, and, I, and I don't say that lightly. I know some, so many people are frustrated with religion and, and, and so forth. And, you know, for me, I have never really been um, attached to religion. Never. Because I, 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 I knew that religion will never satisfy anybody. It changes so often. First of all, it is built on man's ideas. That's it. I've always seek a relationship with God. And with God, I, I find that he is so authentic. He, he doesn't have to prove anything to anybody. He says what he means. And uh, it's up to you to abide by it. And the, the amazing thing about God, he is loving Yes, there is a a part of God that is firm, that, um, you know, will bring judgment. You know, um, in other words, you reap what you sow. I believe that. But I also believe that God cares so much about cleaning up your life, getting you on the right path, getting you to a place where... You are, um, you, you are in his perfect will. You become the image of what he created you to be. So as we live our lives, yeah, we get messy, man. I don't know what your mess is today. And by the way, can I just say this? All of us, we got mess. <laughs> oh, God, we got mess at all different levels. And it's none of your business for you to be trying to figure out what is other people's mess. You've got enough mess of of your own that you need to straighten out your own. And I don't say that in a very dogmatic way. I'm just saying there's a song that I remember years ago, I don't know if they sing it anymore, sweep around your own front door before you come sweeping around mine. Either back door or front door, I don't remember. But you get the gist. Sweep around your own property, your own life. Clean up your own life before you try to clean up somebody else's life. And I tell you what, if you pay attention in trying to clean up your life with God, you'll find out you don't have enough time to try to sweep up nobody else's life, to try to fix nobody else's life, because it's just enough time to clean up your own life. Are you hearing me? So you need to identify you know, what's the mess that's in your life? Let's start there. And I'll go through just a few things to get you to respond to this announcement today that cleanup is coming your way. You have to identify what those areas are and you have to be honest. You are not going to do yourself justice when There's no need for you to lie to yourself. There's no need for you to pretend to yourself. I mean, you're with yourself right now or you will have moments and you're going to be by yourself. Just be truthful. Okay, this area of my life, I need a cleanup. This area, I don't have God there. This area is lacking this. This, this, you need, if it's your health, God, I need a cleanup in my health. God, it's my business. It's my finances. 
I really need a cleanup because I made a mess of myself. Maybe you were trying to reach for something. Maybe you attempted to do something and you knocked down all the structures you've built in your life and it's has splattered on the ground. It's all messy and so forth. And, and potentially it can hurt people, people who come down your alley, people who come down into your path, people who God is sending down your aisle, your address, your life for you to have influence on them. They potentially can get hurt. All because there's a mess in your life. You can invite a man into your life that God sent your way, a woman into your life that God sent your way, and because your life is messy, then potentially they can step on things that are broken, have a cut to the point where they're bleeding. Do you know how many people have hurt people who have entered their lives? all because they had a mess in their life and they never cleaned it up. And now the mess has become someone else's mess. Come on. So you have to identify and be truthful. Where are the areas of my life I need to clean up? (laughs) You know, I need God to fix. I need God to just do something. Because if he, God, if you don't clean this up, I don't know, God, I don't know. Are you hearing me? So you need to ask God to help you to discern those areas that you need to clean up and be honest. Second, a second thing you need to do is you need to now take steps to clean up those areas. Take steps to clean up those areas. I'll just go through a list of things. Doesn't mean that it's limited to those things but you'll get the gist of what I'm saying. So let's take, for example, it's your health. You know, your health is really bad and so forth. All right, of course, what are the steps you need to take? Well, don't be your own doctor. Do you know how many people have diagnosed their own problems? Do you know how many people, here's another thing too, do you know how many people have allowed other people to prescribe stuff for them? Tell them what to drink, what to cook, what to eat, what to put together. And while some of those things can be true, some of these people, are they just listen. They don't know what they're saying. They don't know. Do, do not allow enticing words to manipulate your mind to the point you believe something that's not factual. Yeah. You may drink it. You may eat it and think that, okay, Oh, it's got to work and so forth. But come on, you need to be um, intelligent enough to pursue truth. So the first thing you need to do, of course, pray to God. God, you know, I'm not healthy. I need you to give me wisdom. And then he'll give you the faith to increase and to do what is right, to do the works behind it. So the first thing you need to do is to go to your doctor. And I know sometimes... People are not expecting spiritual leaders to bring balance to the word of God. You know, it's just, I believe God, I'm going to heal. Ignore doctors, eating the wrong stuff, doing everything that is wrong and hoping for a miracle. That's stupidity. Go to a doctor and ask God to give you wisdom and do your research and make sure you're going to the right doctor, right? And when necessary, get a second opinion. But you go to the doctor and you ask the doctor, and don't be afraid, especially for men. We're scared of going to the doctors. Just go and and let them diagnose the problem. So at least you know what you're working with. And in a lot of cases, what you have to do in fixing to clean up your health life is to start eating properly. And that's tough. Oh, that is tough. That is tough. That is tough. It's tough, man to eat right, but you have to. So my suggestion to you, find a way to go and eat right, okay? Ask a dietitian, somebody to speak into your life, to guide you if you don't, because if you don't know, you don't know. Don't pretend as if you know when you don't know. So go and eat healthy, exercise. In other words, take the necessary steps to clean up your health life. When it comes to, let's say, business, maybe there's workplace drama. Your whole workplace is messy, broken, dysfunctional, and so forth. Start with you. Before you go around 
blaming your boss, your supervisor, the coworkers, the CEO of the company, turn the light on yourself. What are you doing that's contributing to the mess? Think about that. If you're doing everything that's right, then okay, then we move to the next step. But don't point fingers at everybody else and everybody else is, is wrong and you're perfect and you're right. Examine yourself. What am I doing to contribute to the mess on the job? Is it that my I'm tardy, I'm going to work late? Uh, is it that I'm always negative, I'm always fighting against the um, management uh, um, you know, instructions and so forth? Yeah, you may have your opinion. But if, if a 200 of you are working at the place, it's 200 opinions, you cannot have 200 opinions to become law, to become the order of the day. You, you're never going to be successful that way, right? So you have to be willing to let your guard down, if you know what I mean, and, and adopt to somebody else's idea, right? Think about that. If it's in business... Okay, what are you doing? Is it that you're not disciplined enough? That the reason why you financially you're not succeeding is because you don't know how to manage money. You don't know how to market properly. You have poor customer service, um, you know, um, business best practices and so forth. So you have to find a way to, to clean that up, right? If it's a relationship, you have to find a way to say, okay, before I blame, you know, well, you know, there ain't no good men out there. Well, well, before you start going, because that's not true. Just like you are vouching for women, there are good women out there, out here, and they can't find a good man. I believe there are good women out there, but there are also bad women out there too. So you can't say all men are bad. You have to then look at yourself because... Is it possible that the reason why you've created a mess in your life is because you are attracted to the wrong energy, if you will, the wrong person, the wrong personality? You are doing something. Maybe it's your attitude. Maybe it's the way you see things. Maybe your attitude is you're selfish, you're self-centered. Um, if you don't have it your way, then nobody else is going to be happy Maybe you're not really realistic. Maybe you're living into this fantasy world. Maybe you just want what you want and you care nothing about another person. You see, you have to examine yourself. Because the only way you can clean up that mess is when you identify the aisle. Clean up on aisle 11. They didn't say clean up in the store. Could that be crazy? You'd have to walk around every aisle trying to find out where the mess is. They have identified where the mess is and they called it out. You have to identify where your mess is and call it out and say, hey, I, I, you know, this is what I need to do to have better communication with people. If you're in marriage, the same thing. Maybe you need to say, okay, if your marriage is messy, uh, what did I do to contribute to the mess? How do I clean it up? How do I address it? Don't be going down in aisle 12. Don't be going down in aisle 14. Don't be going down talking about, well, you know, I wish my marriage was like aisle 15. You know, I wish my wife would be like aisle 15's wife or my husband be like aisle 15 husband and so forth. No, 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 no. You focus on yours because it could be that you're not willing to clean up a mess that, quite honestly, you don't even see. There's no reason for you to clean anything if you don't think it's dirty. Oh, that's good. If you don't think that that is dirty, if you don't think that you've got some dirt, some mess in some areas of your life, then why are we having this conversation? If you think everything is fine and maybe what Henry is saying doesn't relate to you, why are we having this conversation? Because I can't help you. And quite honestly, I don't think anybody can help you. And here's the unfortunate thing. There are so many people that we encounter who are like this. 
they will not change, will not see themselves, because the point is there's nothing for them to change. Now, the public sees it, but they can't see it because of the scale that's over their eyes, right? So if you walk in, you know, it's, it's amazing. You got people. You can go to their homes and you're like, oh my God, that's nasty. How do you live in this? And you're freaking out because you're like, that is dirty. That is a mess. Stuff is all over the place and so forth. But the truth is, you see it, see it, I should say, as a, as a mess, but they don't see it that way. They're living in it. It's comfortable. They're comfortable with it. You know, I, I was watching the news one day, and there was a lady in Miami, Florida, who was living with about, I think, 40 cats. 40 cats. I mean, how can a human being live with 40 animals in your house? Anyway, 40 cats. And the city came down because they found out and so forth, the smell that was coming from the apartment. And the city came down and, um, you know, got a warrant or whatever they did and got into that woman's house. When they showed the image or images of that woman's apartment, I was sick to my stomach. I am like, how can it, it was horrible. The kitchen, when I say the kitchen is like a, some um, disorganized warehouse. It's, you barely can get your way, stuff piled up in the sink. I don't want to even say the gross stuff I saw. And she's been living there. It was a mess. And they say the smell. And you're thinking, like me, how can a human being think that that is normal? that that is acceptable. Even if you don't care about your neighbors for your own life, how? And it dawned on me, the woman doesn't see a problem with it. She thinks it's okay. She thinks it's perfect. She thinks it's healthy. She thinks it's quite normal. Here's the point. If you don't see anything wrong with your life, if you don't, if you can't ask God to reveal to you and show you you and show you the mess that's in your life, no matter what anybody else is saying, they, it, it, it won't help you. And, that's, and I learned this. It, it took me a while to learn this is honestly stay out of people's business. Sometimes I'll see things and I'm like, hmm, but stay out because a lot of times you can't fix it. You can talk, and that's the problem with us. We talk about stuff we have no control over. We cannot change. And that's why our conversation becomes hostile and, and, and evil. Because you talk about people, you gossip with your family, your friends, your spouse, whoever you gossip with, and you vent and you say all kinds of stuff. How does that help? Because I'm this kind of a person, I'm always saying I want to benefit from my conversation. I listen. I've always been like this to talk about you and just to talk about just to dog you out. I, I, what does that do for me? It doesn't do anything. Now, if I talk about you, I must be able to say help you. I may speak the truth, but in the end, how can I help you? So, in the case of this woman on the news, is boy, she's nasty, man. That house is nasty. God, how can a human being live like that? But I tell you what. We got to find a way out to help her. Maybe get her some mental help because it could be mentally. So there's a cleanup mentally. She needs cleanup in her mind. So we need to maybe get her start there first so she can see her brain can begin to think, uh oh, this is not normal. Then get some help and we clean up our apartment. Of course, get the cats and get them some homes, take them to the, um, you know, the um, Humane Society so that they can get some homes for them and so forth. I'm just talking about cleaning up in a positive way. So I hope you understand that today's podcast is is not just for the 
person you know, your friend you know, and I would encourage you, please get them the message. Get them this podcast. Tell them to come and listen to it. But it's, re- it's really for each and every one of us to examine ourselves, to see where the mess is in our lives, how messy things are, and find a way to clean it up with God. We cannot do it on our own. Ask God to help us to clean up our lives so that we don't have to file chapter 11. We don't have to run our lives bankrupt as failures. You can do it. I can do it. Thanks again for listening. Please forward this podcast to someone. I love you. God bless you.